on Facebook Live, facebook.com backslash live now DT. Newman's getting ready here. And it's funny how the light is so dim on Newman because it's almost like it's not your segment yet. So he's he's not there yet. I'm still alive. He is, but he's not. So we're happy to be here in the studios with you. John Newman coming up in just a little bit with Jordan Newman and Newman Sports Cards with Collectible Corner, your late night talk show in the morning. And we link sports uh, sports card collecting to life. We link it to what's going on in the sports world, the values of the cards, and so much more. We also talk about faith and give you some comedy to help you enjoy your TGIF the right way. Before we do that, though, we're going to get into the ACC coaches. I had an opportunity to speak with a bunch of coaches inside of the Atlantic Coast Conference, and it is my honor, it is my privilege, and I, I truly appreciate it so very much to speak with these coaches. We're going to start with Justin Fuente of the Virginia Tech Hokies. I had an opportunity to speak with Justin Fuente this week, and Justin Fuente and I heading into week five here are going to share our thoughts with you right now. And we're going to get that going here. So let me let me get him set up for you here. Justin Fuente, once again, of the Virginia Tech Hokies. Is this what he had to say to me when we had the opportunity to talk this week? Uh, with Josh Jackson going down and Ryan Willis stepping in, just what you can say about it. I know you got a couple other guys behind Willis as well. Just what the quarterback room looks like and just your expectations moving forward, knowing that you won't have Jackson for a little while. I'm pleased with the development in our room. Um, obviously, I'm happy that we have Ryan here in our program. He's been in our program for some time now. Um, it's not often that you have a backup quarterback that has experience at the Division One level, and, and Ryan's got that, and has shown flashes of doing some, some really good things. And then we have two young guys in there that continue to get better with every rep. I mean, they're um, – you know, big uh, physical kids that uh, I think have are going to have opportunities as they continue to develop to to be really good players. And you made mention of that that you know it's it's not something you see every day to have a backup quarterback with experience. With what happened with Kelly Bryant at Clemson and this redshirt rule that allows the opportunity to play four games and then potentially leave, do you think that this could hurt? that opportunity for a team like yourself where your starting quarterback goes down and you don't necessarily have that guy there if he got frustrated or upset and decides to leave. Could this rule kind of backfire in a situation where you need a guy to step up during an injury? Um, I, I certainly, uh, I guess I could, I don't want to address the Kelly Bryant deal. Like I don't really have very much knowledge about that whole situation. I've been locked up in the staff room all day. Pete just told me that he's leaving. I don't really know what all went into that. But in general terms, I do think there's potential for more transfers. I mean, that's um, quite honestly part of the society that that we live in now. Um, and, you know, kids are transferring in high school. They're transferring in junior high. They're transferring all over the place. And, you know, that's, that's part of what we're dealing with right now. Um, in terms of the red shirt rule, um, yeah, certainly. I mean, it's an, another thing for, for players and, and coaches alike to consider, um, you know, when trying to make decisions that are best for them. That coming from Justin Fuente, once again, of the Virginia Tech Hokies. And to take a look at Virginia Tech and what is coming up this week, the Virginia Tech Hokies will be at Duke, calling this, I think, the best Duke team that he has seen since coming to Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech will be at Duke, who's ranked number 22 in the country. Virginia Tech is not ranked right now after losing Old Dominion. The game will be Saturday, September 29th at 7 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. Next up on the docket here of the ACC coaches that I had an opportunity to speak with is going to be Dave Clawson of Wake Forest. Dave Clawson of Wake Forest, our conversation heading into week five right here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. And this is what Dave Clawson had to say to me when we had the opportunity to speak with one another this week as they head in to the rest of their season with a coach that was given longevity and has found success with that longevity. Just to uh, kind of go off of that, how, how the team has responded and just what you've seen from the players in this decision and, and, you know, obviously moving some things around coaching wise, just how they've responded. 
I mean, we'll we'll see in the in the coming weeks. Um, it's it's kind of new, um, you know. But again, we have good coaches here, and we've had two good practices. But we're just two days into this, three days into it. So we'll, you know, we'll. we'll I'm more concerned with that we get better over the next two months. And I think anytime something like this happens, it's it's a little bit of a shock to the system for the players. Um, but again, that's those are decisions you got to make as a head coach and. They're certainly not fun to make, um, but you always have to do what you feel is best for the program. And, uh, you know, I told the players before it came out, and uh, we're moving forward. And you said it was kind of uncharted territory for you and and also made mention of the notion that it wasn't a spur-of-the-moment decision and to get back to some of those things that you're looking to clean up and whatnot. What are some of those pillars that you're looking to right now as you get the staff together, what are some of those pieces that you really want to hone in on and zero in on that you're seeing on film in these last few games? I mean, I just think more than anything, it's just the communication on our defense that makes sure that when the ball is snapped, we have all 11 guys playing the same defense uh, in their correct stance, in their proper alignment, in their eyes where they supposed, they're supposed to be. And if we do that and we end up giving up plays because a team's better than us or we lost a matchup, uh, those are things that, that that's football. You can live with it. But I just want to see us aligned in stances with our cleats in the ground and our eyes where they should be and making sure that we're playing defenses that all 11 guys are on the same page. That coming from Wake Forest head coach Dave, Dave Clawson, pardon me, that said goodbye to his defensive coordinator. He said, I believe it was in 19 years of coaching, he's never made a decision like this in the middle of a season, but it was something that needed to happen. It was something that needed to come down. And ultimately, you know, he made this decision. And like you said, communication is the thing that he's really looking for on this team moving forward to be able to communicate. And and just, I mean, it sounds simplistic. You know, there must have been a lot of issues with his defense because he said, I, I want us to all make sure that all 11 guys are playing the same defense on the field, that we're aligned, that we have our eyes where they're supposed to be, our cleats in the ground, so it kind of seems like scratching it down and, and just going to the foundation of everything and rebuilding it with Wake Forest. They're not a bad team, but obviously with the struggles they've been having defensively, Dave Clawson had seen enough as he moves forward with his team and uh, figuring out what to do there as far as the defensive coordinator job and the situation that they are now in right now as they move forward in the grand scheme of things. And I do want to make a note here for Wake Forest. They will be at home against Rice without their defensive coordinator for the first time here. They'll be on the ACC network at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Rice at Wake Forest will be coming up in this uh, this week, Saturday, September 29th. Next up on the docket is a link back to the American Athletic Conference and that is because Pat Narduzzi, who I've spent a lot of time speaking with of Pittsburgh, is going to be traveling to Central Florida. If you watched our other video that was just previous to this one this morning on facebook.com backslash live now DT, you heard from Josh Heupel of Central Florida. They will be hosting Pittsburgh and Pat Narduzzi this weekend. And with that coming up, I have the opportunity to speak with – Pat, with Pat Narduzzi of the Pittsburgh Panthers. So Pat Narduzzi and I have the opportunity to speak with one another, and this is what he had to say in our conversation. Once again, the Pitt Panthers heading over to Central Florida down in Orlando. It's going to feel like summer there, especially for Pittsburgh, and this is what Pat Narduzzi had to say to me when we got to speak this week heading into that game. Kind of going off of that with Mackenzie Milton, and you said obviously a uh, connection with Heisman. Just just what you've seen from him to go a little bit deeper into his game. I know you're describing a few things there, but just how he's playing this season, and if you've seen going back and watching film from prior time, if you've seen any growth or, or anything that he's doing a lot better now than maybe he was doing before. You know, it's hard. To, I mean, when you're you know when you're really good. It's hard to say you're really, 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 really good. I mean, he's already really good. I mean, um, you see him do a lot of the same things he did a year ago, making plays with his feet and making plays with his arm. I mean, uh, you know, what else can he do? I mean, he's Superman out there right now with, with you know, jersey number 10 on, on the front instead of an ass. 
is what I'd say. Um, he does it all. And, and like I said, when you are already playing at high level and you win 13 games as starter, um, you know, I don't, I don't see him doing anything less, put it that way. You've, you've won two, you've lost two. What have been, you know, from these first four games, what you're seeing on film from your team overall, some of those key pieces, key elements that you're taking forward with you that need to be fixed, need to be adjusted as you go into this next game? Yeah, um, you know, obviously, you know, whether you win or whether you lose, whether you're 4-0 or 2-2, two and two, you know, there's things you take from every game. And, and that's probably the biggest thing is, hey, what do you, what have you learned from the game? What have you learned out of your team? What have you learned out of your, you know, your, your, your particular positions and unit groups? Um, but, uh, you know, we just need to be more consistent. I mean, at, at times we're playing really good football and, and then, you know, at times there'll be a mental or physical breakdown that, that, uh, that'll cost you. And, uh, you know, those are the, the little details where, I don't care if it's on offense and 10 guys are doing a great job and one's not. It only takes one guy to break a play down. Um, and, and that's kind of what you see um, in the first four games. Now, that happens all the time, you know. And that's not something, you know, you could – I mean, Central Florida makes mistakes too. Even in their 13-1 season, they made mistakes and had critical areas. You know, do you have a guy that can make up for it or does it hit you just at the wrong time, the wrong place? Um, so those are things that we're working on. That coming from Pat Narduzzi of the Pitt Panthers, who had some high praise for Mackenzie Milton and what Mackenzie Milton is and what Mackenzie Milton, you know, just say no. He he's Superman. He's just wearing number ten instead of an S on his chest. He's wearing that number instead. So a lot of high praise for Mackenzie Milton, the quarterback of the team that he is about to face this weekend. And once again, that game is going to be Pittsburgh at number 13th ranked UCF in Orlando, Florida on three at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time, Saturday, September 9th, September 29th, pardon me, at on ESPNU, Pittsburgh at UCF. The next coach up to speak with here on the broadcast is going to be Willie Taggart. Willie Taggart of the Florida State Seminoles. Obviously, he has not had the start that he had would have liked to have, and the team has struggled. The team is 2-2. Two and two. They just won their game against Northern Illinois at home in Florida State. Now they played three games at home, one game on the road. Their only road game, they lost to Syracuse 30-7 to in the Carrier Dome. First win that Syracuse has had over Florida State in 52 years. And then on the other side of things, they lost at home to Virginia Tech, barely defeated Samford at home. So this is their first big-time win at home for Florida State this season, winning 37-19, to winning by 18 points in this matchup. And with that being said, Willie Taggart is on the broadcast. My Q&A with him is up right now, and this is what he had to say to me this week as he heads into Week 5. Just uh, through these first few games, the first uh, four games for you, just what you can say about what you've seen from your rushing attack with Cam Akers and uh, Jacques West Patrick, as well as the entire group, just what you've seen up to this point. Well, it hadn't been up to the standard that we're looking uh, to have here. Uh, we just hadn't been rushing the football as well as we need to and, and want to. And uh, there's a work in progress. I know we have some talented backs and, I think when you have a lot of rotation up front, that kind of hampers some things of being consistent in what you're doing. So um, I think right now there's a lot of inconsistency, um, but it it got better last week, and we just got to keep working in the right direction to continue to get better. And when you look back at these first four games, just what you're seeing the team is improving on, because I know obviously you spoke about the fact that it's going to take time and implementing what you need is going to take time, but how have you seen the team respond and are you seeing them in this last victory start to bounce back a little better? There's some pieces that are maybe coming together that you're seeing, even if they may be small. Well, um, I saw it the week before, um, at the beginning of uh, last week before we played um, North Illinois, just the way our guys came in with the attitude um, of practicing. You know, they came and holding each other accountable about doing things the right way and um, and executing the right way. And I think it paid off for us in the ball game. Um, some of the same mistakes that we're making that we made earlier or our turnovers and, and penalties. And those are things that, that kills you, especially against a good football team. And we got to get better at it. And that's kind of what I talk about with playing winning football. We, we have talent on this football team. We as coaches got to help teach them how to win again and, 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 and uh, play winning football. 
That coming from Willie Taggart once again in his first season with Florida State. The team is 2-2, two and two, and they are going up against another team that doesn't look like themselves, and that being the Louisville Cardinals. The Louisville Cardinals will be at home for this matchup against Florida State, and just kind of strange how, how things, you know, it's like my how the tables have turned, so to speak. Florida State unranked, Louisville unranked. They play each other on ESPN2 at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. This game can help decide where teams are going to set up in that Atlantic division of the ACC. I told you that I thought going into the season, Louisville's going to struggle to a five to six win season. Florida State right now has got a couple wins, and they've obviously been struggling. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in this game and this game to kind of show, you know, where is the bottom, so to speak because one of these teams is going to get a victory. One of these teams is going to be ahead of the other, and they're kind of evenly matched this season with them both having some tumultuous times and both working to try and get back better and back to where they need to be and where they want to be at this point in their seasons. Coming up next is a guy who has been rebuilding Virginia and doing a great job at it, and that is Bronco Mendenhall. Bronco Mendenhall of the Virginia Cavaliers they're coming off of a victory where they just trounced the Louisville Cardinals, winning that game at home in Virginia. They've won three out of four games they played in this season. They lost to Indiana in the game that Stevie Scott, local CBA product, my alma mater, Christian Brothers Academy, rushed for over 200 yards in his first ever touchdown in his second ever game as a true freshman in college football. Virginia lost that game in Indiana 20-16. to and they ended up defeating Richmond before that, and then after Indiana, defeated Ohio at home and Louisville at home. They're on the road at NC State this Saturday, September 29th at 12.20 p.m. Eastern time. The Virginia Cavaliers, a strong team right now with a quarterback in Bryce Perkins that can do a lot of different things, making them electrifying and kind of giving them the Lamar Jackson factor this season. They'll be on the road at NC State, and we all know that Dave Dorn is a tremendous coach and I have a lot of high praise for him and the work that he's done. So this is going to be a hell of a game as well. This is what Bronco Mendenhall had to say to me this week when we had the opportunity to speak with one another. Here's Bronco Mendenhall in week number five. Uh, quarterback Bryce Perkins, just what you can say about, I mean, I know most recently hurdle the defender, uh, busted plays that he'll turn into something. Just what he's been to you and, and what you're seeing on the film right now of his elusiveness and, and obviously his ability to create plays. Yeah, just that. He creates plays and he's productive. He keeps drives alive when execution breaks down, and that gives us a chance for consistency that we haven't had the, on the previous two years where it took execution, and if the play broke down, it broke down, and the result would show that with Bryce. Um, if there is a miscue, if there is poor execution or a play breaks down, um, there's still a possibility of the play being salvaged, the drive being salvaged, and points going on the board. So just really uh, really productive and very effective. He came from Arizona Western Community College. Just what you can say about the importance of head coaches, not just yourself, but around the country, looking at JUCO and, and at the talent inside of junior colleges and how you can stumble upon a diamond in the rough like Bryce Perkins when you go to the JUCO route. Yeah, well, I'm a product of junior college football. I played in junior college. I also coached in junior college. And so uh, there are plenty of players and people um, that have made an impact and will continue to make an impact that have traveled that road that might not have been as polished or maybe late developers or maybe have made a, a poor decision or two that have allowed them to take the harder road. Um, and anyone that doesn't intentionally look there, and I don't think it's stumbled upon, I think there's an intentional look, looking for, if you frame the criteria appropriately, there's a great chance you'll find um, a, an answer or two in the junior college ranks, as well as prep schools and, and other maybe um, uh, 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 different and maybe unorthodox ways to, for someone to reach into the college football ranks. That coming from Bronco Mendenhall, not only does he have a quarterback that could do a little bit of everything, but he got that quarterback from JUCO, from junior college. And, you know, Syracuse in recent history got a bunch of JUCO players that were strong as well and really helped out and bolstered up their defense in a lot of ways. So shout out to the junior colleges around the country, including OCC right here in our backyard for all the work that they do and everything that they put together to truly do something special inside of college football and inside of sports 
in and of itself. That coming from Bronco Mendenhall in our ACC coverage, my Q&As with the coaches. You heard from the likes of a bunch of different coaches on today's broadcast and inside of this video you're watching on Facebook Live, facebook.com backslash live now DT. I want to thank Pat Narduzzi of Pitt. I want to thank Willie Taggart of Florida State, Dave Clawson of Wake Forest, Justin Fuente of Virginia Tech, and of course, who you just heard from, Bronco Mendenhall of the Virginia Cavaliers. The Virginia Cavaliers have a game coming up this week, and that's going to be at NC State on Saturday, September 29th at 12.20 p.m. Eastern time. And just so everybody knows here, I want to get really quick to the schedule before we wrap up this video and this portion of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora's broadcast. You can watch the game between Virginia and NC State on the ACC Network and the Watch ESPN app this Saturday. North Carolina played this Thursday, September 27th. Yesterday, for those of you listening live, Miami won that game 47-10 to at home. Miami's defense outscored North Carolina's offense big time in this game by more than 10 points in the matchup. Had a bunch of turnovers for touchdowns and a big-time win for the Miami Hurricanes as North Carolina looks to still figure it out. They're 1-3 and three on the season and had the game against Central Florida canceled due to weather. So they are 1-3 and three right now. And uh, they were the worst team in the ACC. behind. And they, they were 14th, Syracuse 13th last season. Syracuse obviously working to move up the hill on this one. And Larry Fedora and the Tar Heels, unfortunately, staying on the bottom of the hill right now for their team and their fans are one and three this season. Syracuse will be at Clemson and you'll be hearing from Syracuse in our next video and right coming up here in a few minutes on mixlr.com backslash wake up call DT Syracuse at Clemson. And I told you about Temple at Boston College. Bowling Green will be at Georgia Tech at noon Eastern time on Watch ESPN and the ACC Digital Network. And we talked about Virginia, NC State, Pittsburgh, UCF, Rice, Wake Forest, Florida State, Louisville, and Virginia Tech at Duke, all coming up this week for the ACC. We'll take a step aside here on Facebook Live on Live Now DT. That's facebook.com backslash Live Now DT. We'll end this video and the next video we put up on Facebook Live. So make sure you stay with us. Facebook.com backslash Live Now DT. Our next video will be my question and answer sessions with Dino Babers of Syracuse, the head coach, as well as quarterback Eric Dungy, Jarvion Howard, running back of the team, and running back Mo Neal will all be coming up in our next video. And for those of you listening on our live radio stream, continue to listen on mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt, and you'll get those conversations as well.